Hello, everybody, and welcome to turn to page number 10, double digits, Halloween style. Boo. How are you booing? I, I'm booing very, uh, it's spell. Like oh, okay. Uh, how are you booing? I'm booing poorly because it sounds like booing would be like, I'm not enjoying this moment. You know, mm -hmm. but I am booing. So I'm booing poorly because I'm doing well, because it's the diary of a mad mummy. It's I don't know. It, what's more perfect than reading a goose bumps on Halloween day in America time? I am a time. little worried. Rito, I have to admit, I'm a little worried about reading a ghost bumps on, uh, on, on ghost day. Okay. Yeah. What if it comes real? Like, that's the day it would occur on, right? Absolutely. If we were ever going to read one of these books and someone's going to reach out of one of the pages and strangle a throat or something like that, it's going to occur on a ghost bump day like today. <laughs> yeah. The, go the classic R.L. Stein ghost bumps famously yeah, come to life. October 31st, <laughs> all ghost bumps eve. Yeah, they ch changed from goose bumps to ghost bumps because it happened in the... It, it, it's the... <laughs> The past version when you have read a goosebumps it's, ghost bumped yeah if you read goosebumps in the past then it was ghost bumped so uh we have nine books that are ghost bumped and we are on to our next here yeah he's uh you know i will say i like the touch on the cover there is a mummy wearing some glasses got some bulging eyes got a you know a beaker of or a test tube of caustic liquid. And mm -hmm. in the back, he's writing furiously in a, uh, a hieroglyphics diary, which yeah. that's cute. That's a cute idea. I, I, I love as well that there's hieroglyphics on the cover and then yeah. in parenthetical in English, my yes. diary, which I'm yes. like, is that the translation of the hieroglyphics above? I, I think so. I think that's what's saying. Is he writing in parenthetical after everything he writes in the book as well? Is he writing it in two languages? Is this the Rosetta Stone of understanding Absolutely. hieroglyphics of the Mad Mummy? Absolutely. You know what else is the hieroglyphics for understanding the Diary of a Mad Mummy? The mm -hmm. Beware page. The Beware page. Beware! Do not read this book from beginning to end. You and your family are visiting an exhibit in ancient Egypt when you make a discovery of your own. A 4,000-year-old diary written by a mummy. Cool, you think, as you slip the book into your pocket. But then you find out the mummy is alive. And he wants more than just his diary back. He wants your body. <laughs> You've got to find a way to stop him. There are clues in the diary to help you. But first you'll have to decode ancient hieroglyphic writing. Or journey to the pyramids in Europe. Europe, Egypt, wow. Oh. <laughs> I saw an E and I was like, I got this. Autocomplete. Or journey to the pyramids in Egypt. Can you unlock the secrets of the Mad Mummy's diary before he gets you under wraps? <gasps> this scary adventure is all about you. You decide what will happen and how defying the scares will be. Uh, just before we take a deep breath and yeah. leap ourselves into ghost bumps. <laughs> or, sorry, goose bumps, it will be ghost bumped. Yeah. Just a real quick reminder to those of you who will oh be looking goodness. for this on YouTube in the future. Uh, you'll be able to find that looking on YouTube for Turn to Pagecast. Unfortunately, we don't just have the custom URL set up for it at the moment, but you will be able to find it by searching Turn to Pagecast on YouTube for the channel that will be continuing to host these there. It's true. Or if you are watching it on YouTube right now, there will be a link in the description for the correct channel where it is going to potentially in the future, it's p potentially going to be the only place to find it on YouTube. It's still going to be obviously on all of the streaming sites, but there is a chance at some point soon that that will be the only place in video form to find it. So make sure you are subscribed to that. That is, thank you. I, I asked you to remind me because I thought I wouldn't forget if I said that. And then I did, I did, I did forget. <laughs> 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 i will say not to go back to the book here but mm. it says first you're gonna have to decode the ancient hieroglyphic writing i don't think it'll be yes. too bad since he already has done it for us in parentheses mm -hmm. it should be as long as easy. the only things written on the inside are my and diary yeah we'll understand it all it's a, we'll, we'll get some form of it right 
Like, I, I can only speak in, in mys or diaries. My, 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 diary, diary. Diary, my, my. You know. It's all about the inflection. I... Ah, uh, it's a very tonal language. I yes. see. I see. I, I haven't seen many tonal written languages, but I guess that's what <laughs> accents are. Yeah, I guess that is the thing, huh? Well, speaking of accents, uh, <clears throat> do you want to turn to page one and see if the, this person has an accent? The most authentic of tour guides. Welcome to San Francisco. <laughs> the tour guide says, her <laughs> Her voice echoes in the marble lobby of the office building. This is the famous pyramid building, the city's famous skyscraper. When do we get to see your mommy? <laughs> your five-year-old sister whines at your side. You cringe and squeeze Susie's hand. You wish you didn't have to drag her around, but taking care of her always was your job on family vacations. Oh, well, you think. Who cares? This is going to be the best vacation ever. You and your family are staying in a hotel in downtown San Francisco. You have a view of the whole city from your window, including the tall, spindly pyramid building just a few blocks away. And this month, there's a display of ancient Egyptian artifacts in the lobby, including a real mummy. You can't wait to check it out. I want the mummy! Susie whines again. I want my mommy. I want my mommy. Your older brother, Derek, chants, imitating Susie's babyish voice. You laugh <laughs> at Derek's joke. Then you whisper to Susie. We'll see it as soon as the tour group gets out of the way. You peer through the crowd at the mummy in the glass case. Hey, did that mummy just move? Turn to page two. No, we're on we're on page one at the time. There's no way it moved yet. No, not yet. Maybe on page two. Your heart starts pounding. It can't be. But you know you just saw that um that ummy mummy's arm move. <laughs> Did anyone else see it? You stare hard at the brightly lit display case in the middle of the lobby. A tour group crowds around the glass, blocking your view. So you stand on your tiptoes. Under a pinkish halogen light, you can see ancient bandaged mummies mummy singular lying in a beautiful gold painted wooden box it's the first mummy you've ever seen a king from more than four thousand years ago a dead person something about it gives you the creeps a tour group the tour group moves away and the lobby clears come on susie squeals pulling you towards the mummy case a strange chill runs up your spine as you step closer you gaze at the mummy's face and shudder it's hideous. Part of his face is still wrapped up, but part of it isn't. You can see his dried, leathery skin stretched tightly over a shrunken, bony nose. You back away, and your foot bumps into something on the floor. Turn to page three. You're getting tabletopped by a mummy. <laughs> you, gl <I> got you. <laughs> you glance down to see what you've kicked. Hey. Look. You cry out softly, but no one's listening. The tour group scattered. Susie has let go of your hand, and she's pressing her nose to the glass in front of the wooden mummy case. As usual, your 14-year-old brother, Derek, is acting as if he doesn't know any of you. He's talking to some kids by the door. Your parents examine another display case. No one notices what you found on the floor, so you pick it up. It's a small clump of folded pages tied together at the edge with dried grass. That can't bind up book it looks like some kind of ancient book, book. It, it's like it's not it, it's dried it's also dried <laughs> like it was that would crumble that would crumble it's the fact that imagining that that's not dust right now from ancient you times ever to, you ever tried to bend an old leaf yeah how well does that work for yeah you? i think I don't they know. use that for as a hinge i've tried to make a bracelet out of blades of grass that weren't dry already sucks <laughs> mm -hmm. like possible sure uh, long term no either way you open it carefully the pages pages seem as if they might crumble in your hands unlike the grass mm. you peer at the squiggly markings on the page to your surprise you recognize words they're in english the handwriting is hard to read but you finally figure out what it says 
this is my first day in the tomb. I am wrapped so tightly, I fear I may never breathe again. The bandages that preserve me are a prison. I am a king, yet they have brought me here, drained of my blood, and bound me with bandages. Against my will. Stop, I beg them. Do not do this horrible thing. I am not dead, I am alive. Keep reading on page four. Your mouth drops open as you flip through the ancient pages. Could this be a diary of some kind? A mummy's diary written 4,000 years ago? But why is it in an ancient hieroglyphics? How could it be in English? This is weird, definitely weird, but somehow in your heart you know the diary is real. Every word of it is true. You glance around again, no one notices you. You turn to another page and read on. I am embalmed alive! Me! The Pharaoh! The King! And why? For one reason only. Because upon my neck, I bear a strange birthmark. A red stain in the strange shape that frightens my people. They think it's a sign of evil. Ivan, I am not quite sure what it means. Does it really mean I am evil? Could I actually hurt people? Am I mad? Aww. Your hands tremble as you flip to another page and read on. Each night my spirit walks the earth for centuries. Each night my spirit writes this diary. But now, at last my chance has come. Tonight my body will walk the earth. Tonight, here in the strangest of all pyramids, I will escape my prison. Turn to page nine. Can it be possible? Is the mummy going to escape tonight? How? And is this the strangest of all pyramids? The pyramid building? It would seem strange to some old pharaoh, you guess. You read the, over the same pages again, trying to make sense of them. Each, Each night my spirit writes this diary, it says. No way, you think. He isn't writing with his hand. He's writing with his mind. This mummy thinks something and it appears on the page. Awesome. You shoot a quick sideways glance to make sure the lobby guard isn't watching. Then you tuck the diary under your shirt. Turn to page 132. Mm. You can use that to cheat at blackjack. <gasps> oh, yeah. Quick, should I invest in Apple? Wait, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love the idea that the mom yeah. is actually just like a really astute financier. And is actually, like, well, actually, I think you can get good year over year returns on that. Invest in for a couple of years and then divest. <laughs> I mean, he's been around. He's seen it all. It all works in cycles. So it's very, very true. He's seen booms and busts since back before it was Empire days. Boy, has he ever. You got to read more of this. It's amazing. The mummy writes it with his mind. So it's good. <laughs> but just then you hear your mother calling your name. Yoo-hoo. Weird name. Again, she calls you. Yoo-hoo. Bring <laughs> Susie and come on. <laughs> she says, you've got to get away so you can look at the diary. You don't want your parents to see it and take it away from you. Not after you just found it. You scan the lobby for some place to go. You spot an elevator. Hmm. Maybe you could duck in there and zoom to the top of the pyramid. Finish reading the diary before someone finds you. Or maybe you should just keep the diary hidden and wait. You don't want to get in trouble with mom and dad. And besides, your hotel isn't too far away. You could sneak back here tonight and see if the mummy really escapes. The diary says, tonight I'll escape my prison. So what will it be? How did we know for a fact it was written today? Like, Oh, yeah. It wasn't postmarked. Yeah. Like, how do we know it's definitely tonight? Because it could honestly, it could be like, you know, the world's going to end in 2022. Like, or tw wait, oh, shoot. That's yep. still happening. The world's going to end in 2012 or 2020. You know, <laughs> you read that like, it's the world's going to end this year. Postmarked? Oh, 2012. You know Who what knows? it is? It says, tonight, ellipsis, I will ah. escape my prison. I think in the actual note, it says, tonight, the 30th of October, <laughs> 2022, I will escape my prison. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. If you come back tonight, turn to page 20. You take the elevator now, 43. What's up? Do you think we should go up that elevator? I think tonight is the coward's option. I think tonight is the coward's option. Even though it's like, Let's be a little bit of a coward, but come back at the the time of night where it would be most scary. I still want to take the elevator. What? 
yeah, like both of these options are trying to figure out whether or not the mummy is going to come back to life, right? But only yeah. one of these options is trying to be proactive about it. The other one is just like, well, I just want to come back and see if we die. Yeah, uh, yeah, just like I don't know. I want to, I want to go go play a couple games of Call of Duty. Come back, see if that, see if maybe then he's alive. <laughs> I just <laughs> this. This actually is the only wrong solution to the trolley problem because that is someone <laughs> who's gone, should I pull the lever? And they've just put their hands over their eyes and turned around and waited. Like, no, I don't want any involvement whatsoever. No information for me. I just hope no people die. I mean, I feel called out. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would totally you, be my answer. I'd be like, oh, God, no. You... You are the perfect inverse to my partner, Peak, whose offering to the trolley problem is, no matter what, I am pulling the lever. <laughs> I don't care if it goes from one person to a million, I'm pulling the lever. It's, you know what, actually that is the only, the only wrong is to have some <laughs> overarching thing that exclusively. I mean, why- well, Actually, I, that just does get back into the field of <laughs> actual debate and philosophy. Though. I would feel like maybe the wrong the wrong way to do it would be to think about what you personally would understand as the correct moral decision and then actively do the opposite of what you personally think is the correct moral decision. Yes, very fair. <laughs> very fair. Either way. The hyperbolic wrong. Though. Yeah, exactly. We decide. We decide. Uh, you, duck in, you decide to duck into the elevator. With the diary tucked under your shirt, you casually stroll over and push the up button. But the first elevator that arrives is going down. Oh, well, <laughs> that'll do. Uh, trolley problem. Uh, okay. Quickly, you slip into the elevator. Luckily, no one else gets on with you. Your parents don't even notice that you're gone. Great, you think, as the car whooshes it downward. Now you can read the diary in private. Ding. Bell rings as you... Oh, as the doors open onto the basement. Weird. You say as you step out of the elevator, this is the basement? To your amazement, the place looks as if it were built thousands of years ago. The walls were made of huge blocks of rough tan stone. The only light shines from a fixture over the elevator doors. In the dim glow, you can see the elevators are the only modern looking part of the basement. Cautiously, you walk down a strange dark hallway. Your sneakers scrape against the stones. It's really too dark to read the diary, but you can't help wanting to explore. The diary can wait, you decide. Explore the basement on page 43. So the, the Beware page did say, do you explore the museum or do you go to Egypt? Have we just gone wait. in an elevator to Egypt? Oh my God. Perchance. What is this place, you wonder? Egypt? It sure doesn't look like a basement of a modern skyscraper. Why don't you see any of those, any big basement, <laughs> big basement equipment? Like <laughs> boilers, <laughs> you know, basement equipment. Like boilers and furnaces, what I would call them. Where's the janitor, anyways? The sound of your footstep bounces off the stone walls. The echo makes it back, the back of your neck tingle. The hallway narrows, you duck in some places to avoid banging into the ceiling. The path twists and turns, sometimes sloping up, sometimes down. There's barely enough light for you to see. You worry you won't find your way back. Maybe this is a mistake. But you keep going. Except for the eerie silence and the darkness, this place is cool. You're too curious to turn back now, so you come to a small tunnel off to the right, and it seems to slope up. A set of stone steps leads down to the left. Which way? Tunnel or steps? I... I are you a tunnel or step person? I don't know if we have. I don't think we have data. Enough information. Uh, Want to go to the tunnel? I'm I'm down to I'm down to go to the tunnel. I do wonder, like, literally, if, just because it's the top. Yeah, the top one. But I do wonder if, like, having a working knowledge of how like pyramids are laid out inside would actually give you details. Yes. So there was the point where I was trying to think about that. Yeah. Like, oh, w were they structured specifically such that the soul would be captured by going up? Like, are we talking like you're know, effectively like a rectory in like a monastery kind of situation? Uh, or, you know, is the basement like interring them further into the earth? I legitimately think there are actual rules about that there in terms are. of pyramid building that might actually be important here. But 
I don't oh. I don't know them off the top of my head. All I know is they've tried to make them purposefully as complicated and winding as they could so that like grave robbers wouldn't get to it. But ah, uh, oh, so we should. Oh, you know what? Here's some little uh, extra tech. I'm gonna start keeping track of a little bit of the the. I'm I'm, I'm gonna leave a, a breadcrumb trail such that we have the ability to escape here, just in case at the very end is like, okay, now perfect instructions backwards to leave, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, you decide to explore the tunnel. You step into it and start to climb up its gentle slope. Almost immediately, you feel a draft. There's a weird chill in the air. Where's it coming from? Maybe the tunnel leads directly outside, you think? But then the tunnel twists sharply and starts sloping downward. You keep walking, even though the light is getting dimmer. You've gone this far. Might as well discover where it leads. A few more steps downward, and... Ouch. Your shoulders scrape against the walls. The tunnel's getting even narrower, you notice. In fact, soon the tunnel is so narrow, you'll have to turn sideways to fit through. And what's that funny smell? It smells like either burning rubber or something. <laughs> or something. It makes your nose tingle and your throat feel tight. Suddenly, exploring doesn't seem like such a good idea. In fact, you're beginning to think it's all a big mistake. You hate to be a chicken and... Wait, you hate to chicken out of the adventure and how dangerous can the basement of an office building be? If you... Well, clear... Okay. If you keep going, turn to page 93. If you turn back, scurry to the stone steps on page 83. Hmm. So I we mean, can revert here. Like... Or we can persist. I mean, I feel like we are supposed to just trust our stupid little gut. And just... I, I like the idea of that because I do worry, like, burning rubber or something might be a ceremony of some kind that's being performed and getting there early might be a bad idea for us. So you want, you want to go to the stone steps? I'm down to go to the stone steps. I mean, I'm I'm fine with either or, to be clear, and I, I am on all of these, because dying can be erased in a simple return to the previous page. That is true. But, well, let's go. Do you want to go die, then? Let's go die on 93. And let's, maybe, let's go die. Let's keep going. Let's go die on 93, and then if it's not a death, great. All right. Ah, <laughs> hey, good for you. You've got a spirit of great adventure. There's only one pitfall with that kind of attitude. You never know when you're going to stumble into something bad. Did we say pitfall? Did we say stumble? You take two more steps and your foot suddenly gets caught in a small crack in the floor. So you stumble forward and fall. Ah! You scream as you find yourself falling, falling, falling into a pit a hundred feet deep. You finally land at the bottom. At least you land on something soft. But then you start to sink. Thick, warm ooze covers your body, sucking you under. The ooze grows warmer and warmer. Now it's burning hot, scorching your skin. You realize the ooze is tar, burning hot tar. You learned about tar pits in school. It's where archaeologists found the remains of cavemen and dinosaurs. The hot tar coats the body and preserves the bones. Congratulations, you're saved. We don't need to read the rest of it. For the next <laughs> thousand years, at least. The end. Well, I mean, hey, I, you know what? It was very quick about it. It was like, you know what? You ignored our warning. Now die to the tar sands. Die big, big time. Bye bye. Burning, scorching, death. But then I guess we're, we're, we're saved though. That is also kind of like one of the most horrific deaths. Like that, being yeah. completely enclosed on all sides by being scorched. Like the iron bull was a torture device, a bronze bull rather, was a torture device where they would put someone inside a metal bull and then just heat it from the outside. And to me, that sounds torturous. This is just that, but perfectly enclosed on your skin on all sides. Yeah, there's also like an element of like drowning in it almost. Too. Mm hmm it's stinky let's go up the stone steps and forget that we totally just died let's do it you decided for the first time with no other detours to take the stone steps on your left the narrow tunnel gives you the creeps after a few steps down the stairs level out you see another set of steps leading upwards and you start to climb again your feet scrape across something gritty on the floor you glance down and see sand sand Definitely weird, you think, as you reach another stone landing. You feel as if you've been climbing up and down for days. You stretch your legs and then continue up the stairs. Where do the steps come out, you wonder? A back exit from the pyramid building? Do they lead to another building? Hot breeze ruffles your hair as you near the top of the steps. 
That's odd, you think? It was chilly this morning. And the weather person on TV predicted rain. Oh, those weather people are oh, getting it wrong. Finally, you reach the top. You walk outside and squint to your eyes as you adjust to the brilliant sun. Huh? Your mouth drops open as you gaze at the scene in front of you. Sand? Camels? Pyramids? Desert? Is this? No, it can't be. Are you in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> are you in egypt turn to page 95 <laughs> no way you think shaking your head this can't be happening it isn't real how could i be in egypt you wonder how stay calm you tell yourself over and over you just came out of the pyramid building in san francisco in the united states of america you can't be in egypt but you are. You see the pyramids and the camels. You hear the wind blowing across the desert. You feel the sand in your eyes. You can smell the taste, smell and taste the sweet, flowery fragrance in the air. You swallow hard every time. Why? <laughs> swallow hard <laughs> and try to figure out how. Why? Suddenly it hits you. The diary. This must have something to do with the mummy's diary. You yank the ancient pages out from under your shirt and open the diary again. The words you read just a few minutes ago are gone. Instead, the whole diary is filled with symbols and pictures. Hieroglyphics. Go back to page 60. <laughs> I love the idea that it's written in hieroglyphics in Egypt and it's written in English in America. Like, it just translates itself based on the soil underneath. Oh, my. Uh, hey, a lot of uh, game devs would pay good money. If they're just like, yeah, wherever you open the game, it's translated right. Boom. <laughs> Great. Magic localization. Exactly. Save lots of money. Your hand trembles as you turn page after page. They're all the same. All hieroglyphics. Terror grips your heart. How can the diary be written in hieroglyphics? How have you somehow gone back in time on top of everything else? You glance around and see some people in modern clothes. Okay, you reassure yourself. At least I'm in the present. You may still have a chance of getting back home, and you want to get there right now. You turn sharply and head back towards the steps, but a young Egyptian man in a long white robe blocks your way. He has smooth tan skin, black hair, and sparkling brown eyes. You notice he's wearing a badge. He must be some kind of security guard. No entrance. He says in English. Convenient. <laughs> I just came out of there. You sputter. No entrance, he says. The Great Pyramid's not open. Turn to page 128. The Great Pyramid? You stare at the guard, your head spinning. You studied Egypt in school. The Great Pyramid is the biggest pyramid of the world. That one sits in the desert near the Sphinx. Yep, you're definitely in Egypt. But I just came out of there. You try to explain. Only it wasn't the Great Pyramid. It was the Pyramid building the guard laughs <laughs> you mean that silly building in america <laughs> <laughs> he knows he would he knows the one specific building in san francisco <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well, i mean he's he's just a big fan of pyramids so he knows yeah. all of them yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of anything adjacently triangular just yeah hit, I, if it comes to a point oh my god i'm in I went to the Louvre to stand outside. I collect and play tabletop role-playing games just to get D4s. You don't understand, buddy. I'm into pyramids. I do like a good D4. Uh, mm. All right. Uh, he shakes his head and laughs again. You've got to believe me. You plead. A and look at this. You shove the diary towards the guard. This diary. It was written in English like a, a few minutes ago. And now it's all changed to hieroglyphs. Before the guard can take the diary, a young man in a tan suit, sunglasses, and a straw hat approaches you. I see you have the famous diary of Bothrama Man. <laughs> Make you sound like a superhero. The man says, he sa the man says, he sounds American. Well, I've always been a fan of Bothrama Man. May <laughs> I see it? Don't give it to him. Uh, the young Egyptian shouts. Give it to me. If you show it to the American, turn to page five. If you give it to the Egyptian, turn to page 22. If you turn and run from both of them, turn to page 106. Oh, boy. 
<sighs> the guy knows. Everyone I mean, everyone here is very familiar with our situation. Yeah. We either can't go too wrong or we can only go wrong. I don't know. Uh, I mean, he knows Boothrama Man. <laughs> Boothrama Man. Which, mm -hmm. I mean, that just makes it sound like a Digimon. It's either a Digimon or a superhero. You, there's no winning. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something <laughs> about... It's both. Because hmm. the, the American wants it. He knows what it is and wants it. Unless he's lying and he doesn't actually know. But mm -hmm. the, the young Egyptian man is... Who would be theoretically more likely to be able to read it? The person who has got like a fascination with it or the person who's from Egypt? That's a good question. Or also avoiding social well, interaction entirely sounds great, but you know, that's just a personal thing. One of them is the god for the Great Pyramid as well. Yeah, I feel like that's probably a good call. I, I'm leaning Egyptian. Me too. And down with America. I don't know if it's that that I just gave a certain amount of malice in my own interpretation of the voice that is like, you know what? I don't trust this guy. Yeah. Well, I see you got that. <laughs> just listen to the way he there. talks. Oh my gosh, that guy, the way he talks. <laughs> you know, I just realized what it is. I see you got that famous diary of both Rama man. I would use that in my political sphere as ah, Frank Underwood yes. on the show House of Cards. If I can. It's like, that's, that's I why see. I can't trust him. Yeah. All right, let's go to page 22. Do it. You decide to trust the young Egyptian guard. He seems genuinely concerned. You hand him the diary. The American looks disappointed, but he turns and wanders away. The Egyptian man tells you his name is Muhammad. Then he examines the diary with his eyes widening. This diary must be returned to the royal tomb of Bathramaman. He cries. Only then will the mummy rest. Come with me. But where are we going? You ask him. To the tomb. He whispers. His eyes narrow and his eyebrows curl in, making him look as if he has a deep, dark secret. Muhammad leads you by, by donkey to the Nile River. There you board a boat and travel south all day and all night. Finally, wow, that's a so much just happened in one sentence. Finally, mm -hmm. he reaches a strange, uninhabited part of Egypt. In the steamy heat, he leads you through a lush jungle and then to another desert area and then to a sandy stone entrance to the tomb. We just skipped like an entire movie in a trilogy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's Don't been lovely getting to know you over these past eight months and the traversal <laughs> of 15 different biomes. <laughs> you going first. Yeah. He, he says, pointing the way. Me, you think? Why me? Turn to page 73. Okay, now I would be upset if he leads us all the way here just to, like, trap us in the tomb or something. I would be upset yeah. at how much time he wasted. <laughs> but your heart starts to pound. You don't want to go into the tomb first. You're not even sure you want to go in at all. Um, why are we doing this again? You ask Muhammad. Just remind me. Muhammad brings his face very close to yours, nose to nose. Because if you don't, he says, the mummy will rise from his coffin in San Francisco <laughs> and stalk you day and night. Everywhere you turn, you'll see his wrinkled skin, his hollow, screaming eyes. You'll hear echoes of tortured cries as screamed as his high priestess wrapped him in bandages and buried him alive. He'll haunt your daydreams, too, and fill your nightmares. You won't be able to think a single thought without picturing him in his moment of death. You'll know his agony when- Okay! Okay! That's enough! Yeah, so it's, you know, hey. Good enough reason to me. Just, <laughs> every waking thought will be agony. Uh, you say, suddenly interrupting <laughs> him. He did, yeah, he did let this run on a little longer than you possibly needed to. Everywhere you turn, you'll see his wrinkled skin, his hollow screaming eyes. You know what? Done. That's it. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. What do you want me to do? Go in. Muhammad says as he points to the tomb. Enter the tomb on page 15. No choice, just do. You enter the cool, dark tomb with Muhammad right behind you. He carries a torch to light the way. The passageway, a narrow corridor made of large stone blocks, is creepy. <laughs> It's creepy. You feel as if someone or something might jump out at you at any minute. 
You walk a few more steps forward and come to a place where the passageway splits into a fork or a Y. Which way? You ask. Follow your heart. <laughs> Mohammed answers mysteriously. My heart, you think? Is, is that some kind of clue? Let's see. Your heart is on the left. Is that what he means? Should you take a passage to the left? You peer down the left passageway, see nothing but darkness, a horrible, empty darkness, as if no one has ever returned from that path. Then you peer down the passageway to the right. It looks wider than the other one and brighter. It isn't nearly so dark. Uh. Oh, geez. You have to just choose left or right. Pretty, pretty much. It's like, do you do, like, do you try and be clever? Or is your heart, be, like, telling you, you know, the one that clearly looks less dangerous is less dangerous? Mm -hmm. I'm fine to go left. I think... Unless, yeah, I think the cryptic hint from Muhammad here is uh, is is the clinching factor because what are we not going to trust him? We just traveled like I know. day and night, and we shared so many stories desert. and kiss exactly. Yes, you decide to take the passageway to the left. Bravely, you march down the oh so dark hall. You walk a few more steps before you realize that you're alone. Muhammad isn't following you anymore. Hey, stupid! <laughs> Muhammad calls. Why'd you go that way? Well... You answer him in your most reasonable tone of voice. You said to follow my heart. And my heart's on the left, so I thought... I said to follow your heart. Muhammad snorts. Instead, you're doing too much thinking with your head. Oh! So does he mean you should have gone the other way? Yes, stupid, and don't look surprised being called that name again. You answered to it, didn't you? Oh. Mm -hmm. Go back to page 15 and take the other passageway, and we won't call you stupid anymore. I'm Mark, mark my words, you better not. I will call my <laughs> lawyer. This That's is, binding. I have that in text. I have it in text. This is libel. I, I will have you know, Mr. Stein that I am a big deal and I am not stupid. Well, some, <laughs> we'll see. You enter the cool dark tomb with Muhammad right behind you. He carries a torch to light the way, the passageway and arrow corridor. read this page. Wait. Oh, wait. Does that oh. not return us to the page where we need to choose left or right? Oh yeah. Oh, oh wait, wait, what? <laughs> I like the thought that they, you return to the page. And then he asks you, he tells you to follow right. your heart again. Get it right this time, stupid. <laughs> All right, Stein, you'll hear from my lawyers. Oh, no. All right, so pass away to the right. You decide to take the passageway to the right. At the end of the hall, you come to a large square burial chamber. Inside, by the light from Muhammad's torch, you see a stone platform where the mummy's coffin once rested. Now, the mummy is in San Francisco on display, but other special objects that once belonged to King Buthramaman are still there. So this is the mummy's tomb? You ask quietly. Muhammad nods. Hey, what's that? You ask. You spot a hinged wooden box shaped like a serpent in painted gold. That is where the diary belongs. Muhammad says. Place it there. He's right. The diary fits in the box perfectly. Now I must leave you. Muhammad says. It is forbidden for me to stay in the king's tomb. But I give you this map and a small torch. He hands them to you. The light should last long enough for you to study the map. If you make the right choices, you'll find your way back through the mystical portal to your land. It was the mummy's magic that brought you here, and the same magic can take you back. Good luck. Wait! You cry. But you're too late. Muhammad has bolted from the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Just very calm delivery of good luck. Immediately turns into the diamond and starts sprinting. Full tilt. I entrust you with this. It'll have just oh enough God. <laughs> just enough light to get out. Bye. <laughs> Page 108. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 
said the quiet part out loud. Muhammad runs away so fast that all you can hear is the fading sound of his sandals flip-flopping on the stone floor. And a peace sucker! Then silence. A horrible, stone-cold silence. You have no time to waste. The torch isn't going to last long. You hold it up and peer at the map. It's a handwritten sketch drawn on brown paper. The edge is torn. This is a map? This jumble of lines? Where's the you are here sign? Your heart stinks. You need help. <laughs> <laughs> Your heart stinks. I like, I, I like mine better. I'm not fixing it. I do too. But then you're not, that, but then you figure it out. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. The steps are though. Wait, the steps are those close together lines on the top left. The tomb is the box at the end of the angled hallway. To be clear, we don't have this picture that it's describing. To be clear, and that other box, the one with the X in it, that's the elevator. The elevator and the pyramid building. You know, because you've seen lots of maps that are marked the same way. The elevators are always marked with X's. Yeah, like okay. on a tr like on a treasure map. It's yeah. always time to get to a, <laughs> the nearest. X marks the elevator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> elevator. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you need to go if you're ever going to get back home. You've got a pencil in your pocket, so you take it out and write the words, write in the words, steps, tomb, and elevator. Then you study the map. Oh, turn to page 90 to study the map. Oh, my God. It's, uh, uh okay. Oh, this is offensive. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, what the hell? I mean, look, you could draw this map yourself with a free uh, two and a half seconds in paint with the line tool. So <laughs> it's 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 not something to be missed here, uh, dear listening audience. However, I will say yeah. it's a little bit convoluted. We're probably going to need to be able to refer back to it at some point. Obviously, we're being told we're not going to be able to because the torch is not going to give us the ability to at points. I'm just going to quickly snap a little photo of this. Uh, it kind of, to be clear, dear listener, it it kind of looks like a, a giraffe wearing a backpack <laughs> on his <laughs> knees. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but, like He's on his knees and he has a backpack. Kind of. And it's it's a giraffe riding on the handlebars of a treadmill. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's a giraffe on the handlebars of a treadmill. Absolutely. <laughs> I see. It's like squatting. Yeah, sure. That's exactly it. Just there you go. Just that's exactly it. A giraffe squatting on the handlebars of a treadmill. One hundred percent. Okay. So I mean. I'm assuming it's going to be like, uh, I mean, the, the first time we ever have to make a decision, we have to go left, mm -hmm. right. Oh, wait, no, we're in the tomb. We're in the tomb. Yes, we're in the tomb at the moment. And it says we want, do you really want to go to the elevator and not the steps? I think we have to go to the elevator because the steps was how we came in, right? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So, it'll be a left, and then we will, oh my god, and then we will take a right, oh my god. It's left, yeah, right, left, 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 straight. Or, oh my god, left. Oh yeah, I guess right, you can go. Left, because I feel like that, isn't that a wall this that's a dead end? Isn't that a, there's a dead, oh, this is great audio listening. <laughs> but. No kidding. I think it just more or less. I think it'll be like a. a let's just move on. We have it. We have it. Left, right, left, right. Yeah. We we have it. I think that will do just it. Just if you ever get lost, drive on a treadmill, only on the handlebars. Okay. The light from your torch is dwindling. It's gonna burn out soon. Quick, memorize the map and the path you need to take to reach the elevator. Remember, you're in the tomb now. So when you come out of the tomb, you'll need to make a choice of the first fork passageway. Which way, right or left? Then you'll have to make three more choices at forks or crossroads, right or left. Don't worry about the places that where the hallway simply bends or turns. You'll just follow it then. Your only problem is choosing what to do when you reach a fork. you got to memorize all three choices because when the torch burns out, you'll be waiting, walking in the dark. So do it now. Oh. Should you go left, then right, then right, then straight? Or should you go left, then right, then left, then right? Oh, I left guess Left and right, then left and right. Okay. So be... 
left and right to the left. Right, yeah, totally. I mean, if we are actually trying to get there, then absolutely. So, left and right, then left and right. That was not as... I, th I thought that maybe it was going to, like, give it to us one by one, but hey, that's too many pages mm -hmm. to write. They don't have all the paper for that. Yeah, exactly. That's a lot of branching paths. That... It's a lot of branching paths that just say you went to the right way or you did not do it good. Okay. Mm -hmm. You stare hard at the map and decide to turn left and right, then left and right. Moment later, your torch sputters and goes out. You're stranded in the cold tomb of the ancient mummy in the dark. Silence. You move a step forward, feeling your way along the wall. Left, right, left, right. You keep telling yourself. You chant the words over and over. Left, right, left, right. Hand brushes against something slimy. Ew. You jerk your hand away. Do you dare touch the wall again? You don't have a choice. How will you find your way around in the dark if you don't? Slowly reach one hand to the wall. Yuck. The stones are slippery with slime. You try not to think about what it might be. You hold your other hand out in front of you. You don't want to smack into anything in the dark. Finally, you come to the first fork. You turn left. Walk a little farther. Turn right. Go a little farther. Turn left. Now, if you remember the map correctly, you just have one more turn. It should be pretty easy from now on. Keep going. Turn the corner on page 26. The hallway turns a few more times, but there aren't any more choices. No more forks. Only Dreadmill. Finally, you see a glimmer of light. Light? Where's it coming from? You turn the corner and spot the answer. The elevator. It, act oh, yeah, it actually. At last, you're mm -hmm. in the basement of the pyramid building, aren't you? You run to the elevator and push the up button over and over. You hope that if you press it harder, it'll come faster. Yeah, sure, like that's ever worked. <laughs> press it again on page 56. You press the up button five more times. Finally, you hear a familiar ding. That sound means that the elevator has arrived. The door is open. Oh, no. A scream rises in your throat, but it never escapes, and neither will you. There, standing in the elevator, is your old friend, the mummy. Your very old friend. Like, like Egyptian times old friend. The mummy was mad when he stole his diary. But that was nothing compared to how he feels now. He hates trespassers, and you dare to enter his sacred burial chamber uninvited. Your visit to his tomb is about to come to a very unpleasant end, and so are you. When the mummy's done with you, you're going to need all those mummy bandages. <laughs> That's a little bit less elegant than normal. Yeah, it's especially considering, like, the mummy is going to kill us. Yeah. Why would we need bandages? What are we going to heal? <laughs> When the mummy is he gonna is done with, us you? with his own bandages? Yeah, doesn't he need those? I, you're gonna need all those mummy bandages. All right, yeah, so we need he's to, just a bag of loose jerky. So we needed to do the wrong thing. Apparently, yeah. Oh shoot, what page was that? Uh, actually, I think that's I, a great question, ain't it? Uh, one twenty-seven. One twenty-seven. All right, I like it. Let's go. All right, almost at once, the torch flickers out. But you don't care. You made your decision. You're going left, then right, then right, then straight. In the dark, you walk boldly forward, your arms outstretched at your sides. You run your fingertips along both walls as you go. Pretty soon, you feel the passageway begin to turn. You've come to your first choice, so you turn left. You walk a little farther, and then you turn right. You keep walking. Suddenly, in the pitch darkness, you feel two hands on your face. Ah! You want to scream? But no sound comes out, except for that sound that came out. Your voice is choked with fear. Boo! A voice says. Boo? Boo who? Mm. Turn That's page 134. Right, It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? The, the hand taps you again. You're it! The voice calls, then laughs. You <laughs> recognize that laugh. It's your brother, Derek. What? You've made it. You've made it back to the pyramid building. Derek, what are you doing down here? You ask. Boy, are you going to get it. He declares. Mom and dad are really worried. And they're mad you left Susie all alone. They have people searching the whole building for you. They told me to come down into the basement. You try and explain to Derek about the mummy, but he only laughs and shakes his head. Then he grabs you by the ear, and he drags you through a door you hadn't seen before, and up some stairs. He's right about your parents. They're really steamed. 
As far as you're concerned, the book might as well be titled Diary of a Mad Mommy. <laughs> you can forget about any more exploring because you're now grounded for a month. The end. I... What? Is this... Is this the good ending? Is this a good... Is this the good ending, I guess? Because... So, what I can tell at this point is if we get left in the burial chamber at all... Game's ending pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, so we... We give the book to the Egyptian man. Just running through... Yeah, at that point, we have to go to the chamber. We have to go down. Uh, yeah, so basically, if we wanted to do something different, we would have to give the book to somebody else. That's really... Mm. That's really where it's at. But I guess that's like... That's the... S satisfying conclusion of that ending? I guess? Hmm... Huh. Do you want to just, like, for kicks and wiggles, go down another path and see if we die quick? Yeah, sure. Let's do, do it. Do you want to just give it to the American man? Let's do it. All right, that's page five. Yeah, there are so many more endings than this. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just... Yeah, that's so weird. That's a, that, that is a weird ending because it's not it certainly is i guess a good ending it's you don't die but you're grounded oh no that's fine <laughs> but it's just also not sad it's not like a satisfying sounding as some of the other endings that are supposedly good true either so way which sorry which of these pages is five jumping back to the five thank you five one two three four five <laughs> i count <laughs> Oh boy. The American looks like a nice guy. You think he's someone you can trust and he might be able to help you get home. You decide to show him the diary. Hmm. The American says, taking a magnifying glass from his suit pocket, flips through the pages, studying them. Very interesting. Don't trust him. The Egyptian guard whispers in your ear. He's a thief. I heard that, and I'm certainly not a thief. The American declares. My name is Webster MacArthur Woobly III, but just call me Webb. I'm a professor of ancient studies at Cairo University, and you are? You introduce yourself as Yuhu. Nice, nice to meet you, Yuhu. <laughs> Webb Woobly says. Can I buy you a tall glass of lemonade in town? Cairo's just a few miles from here, and... I'd like to talk to you about obtaining this diary. Obtaining? As in buying? Sounds good to you. Don't go with him. The Egyptian warns you. Last chance to change your mind. I trust, I mean, I don't trust Web Woobly, but we already did the other option of, so. 28. You can decide to trust him. Oh yeah, 28. You decide to trust Web Woobly. He seems friendly, and with a name like that, how bad could he be? Besides, you sound like you like the sound of his offer. Lemonade, and possibly big bucks for the diary. You'll worry about getting home later. Your new American pal may be able to help you. A cool drink would be refreshing. Webb Woobly says, wiping the sweat from his forehead. Let's go. He, put one, he puts one hand up in the air as if he's hailing a taxi cab in New York City. He sticks two fingers in his mouth and whistles. Almost at once, a guy on a camel rides up. Need a lift, buddy? Camel driver asks. Yeah. Web Wibbly says, then he speaks a few words in Arabic to the camel driver. Pretty soon, the camel kneels down. Climb up. Web instructs you. You do, but as soon as you're seated on the camel, you start to feel guilty. You know you're not supposed to get in the cars with stranger. Get in the car with a stranger. Is getting on a camel so different? Um... I think I'll get down. You start to say. Too late. Web Woobly announces with a small laugh. You're going to kidnap us on a camel? Third of page 119. Wait, page 19, yeah. Before you can protest, mm -hmm. Web Woobly climbs onto another camel. As soon as this camel starts walking, yours follows. Where are we going? 
you ask nervously. Suddenly, this doesn't seem like a great idea, especially since the camel isn't very comfortable to sit on, and boy, does it stink. Takaro, Webb replies. Slowly, the two of you make the bumpy nine-mile camel ride to the capital city of Egypt. When you arrive, Webb takes you to a small cafe on a busy street and orders you the promised glass of lemonade. Now, my young friend, Webb says, let's discuss that diary. How does $2,000 sound? Well, how does it sound? 2000 bucks? That's a, per- that's a better ending than getting grounded. Done. Mm, yeah, but is it enough to start a new life in Europe? <laughs> I mean, is it enough hey. for a small apartment or a camel of our very own some lemonade every other sunday yeah maybe not uh if, if you'd like to take the offer page 63 if you'd like to bargain page 114 i mean i think we might be in a bargaining position but it's also possibly just steals it from us <laughs> so, that's, i mean it's fine let's let's bargain Two thousand dollars. You say to Webb. You've got to be kidding. The diary's got to be worth a lot more than that. Webb's smile fades, and he gives you an angry stare. <sighs> okay. He says grumpily. How about four thousand? You shake your head no. Eight thousand. Webb suggests. No. This is my final offer. Twenty thousand. Wow. $20,000? Is he serious? He's offering you that much money for this mummy's diary? It must be really valuable. Maybe it's worth millions. You sh- I, 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 can we tap out and say yes? You shake your head no, apparently. Uh, rude. Hmm. Webb says, narrowing his eyes. He glares at you as if he hates you. <laughs> then his expression changes. <laughs> the lemonade has arrived. The Egyptian waiter sets a tall glass down in front of each of you. There's only one problem. His lemonade looks normal. But your lemonade is blue. Turn to page 135. Interesting. Webb glances at your glass of lemonade and smiles. Special Egyptian recipe, he says. I thought you might like it. It's sweeter this way. He leans back and waits for you to taste your drink first. He's being awfully polite. What do you do? You don't want to offend him by not accepting this drink from this strange man. And you're really thirsty. You can feel the sand in the back of your throat, but the lemonade is blue, and you're not so sure lemonade should be blue. If you take a sip, turn to page... No. 85. If you rudely reach across the table and take a take Webb's drink instead, turn to page 97. I mean, yeah, right? Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, you're no fool. You aren't, you aren't drinking any lemonade. What's wrong? Webb says. Don't you want to try your lemonade? I'm sure it's much better now. I've sweetened it for you. This guy is definitely a bigger villain than the mummy. Mm -hmm. Just saying. You shake your head. Uh, (laughs) I'm not thirsty. You declare. Webb woobly eyes you carefully. (laughs) Then he puts down the glass. A huge smile spreads across his face. What? Congratulations. He says he reaches into his jacket pocket and pulls out a wallet. When he flips it open, you see his ID card. I'm from the FBI. He explains. You passed the test. Good job. I'm happy to inform you you've been chosen as a part of a small team of kids who can help us catch international art treasure thieves. (laughs) Huh? You grunt. You and all of us feel totally confused. You passed the test. Webb repeats gleefully. You didn't drink that lemonade, which shows you got a good sense and great instincts. You also got a good head for negotiating valuable art treasures, I might add. I I do? You ask, what is this guy talking about? Turn to page 130. You still look confused, so Webb explains it all to you. The diary you found on the floor in San Francisco that was planted there by the FBI. (laughs) <laughs> when you went to the basement of the pyramid building, you found their fake version of it inside of a real pyramid. Wait, you found their fake version of the inside of a real pyramid. Oh my you goodness. You thought you wandered through a basement and came out in Egypt, but you didn't. Webb tells you. We put a special sleeping gas in the air conditioning ducts. 
You fell asleep, and while you were out cold, we had you flown out to Europe. Your parents didn't know about this, or sorry, they did know about this, of course. You woke up in the real pyramid and didn't remember a thing, and the rest has been a test to see how you can handle yourself in tough situations. Wow. You exclaim. Cool. So now I work for the FBI? Yup. What the hell? Webb says. And you get to skip school for a whole year. And we'll even pay you. Congratulations. He raises his glass of lemonade in a toast. Thanks. You answer with a huge grin, picking up your own lemonade without thinking. <laughs> picking up your own lemonade without thinking. You take a big swig. Oops. Remember how your lemonade was blue? There was a sleeping potion in it. Oh, well, you'll wake up soon, but they'll never let you be a secret agent now. Too bad you made a mistake when you're so close to a happy end. What? This is a happy ending, though. We just go home. This is fine. I don't want I mean, to be it's in kind the of FBI. Up people, but yeah, well, it's like, we hello. Would you, can, so we would like to try and test your child out to see if they will accept a drink from strangers in Egypt to stop international art thieves you want to sign up oh you do okay cool strange you were the first mm -hmm. ones <laughs> everyone else sold me the diary yeah, everyone else sold me the diary and drank the blue lemonade <laughs> <laughs> they gave me the diary for the lemonade you don't understand they gave me the poison they traded me, they traded me the diary for the lemonade in which i they drank it all and passed if, on to the if other life. drink the lemonade, it's probably not going to be a sleeping potion, right? It's going to be like a, a, I have like a magic potion or something instead. Like, I mean, let's see here. Let's find out. Web Woobly 19. 85. You take a sip of the lemonade. Are you nuts? Blue lemonade? I mean, come on. Who's ever heard of blue lemonade? It could be poison. It could be sleeping pills. This is terrible. You shouldn't be wandering loose in Egypt if you can't be more careful than that. Well, no problem. You're not loose in Egypt anymore. You're out cold because whatever was in the lemonade has put you instantly to sleep. And when you wake up, the diary is gone. Of course, no. without the diary, you have no business being in this book. So close it immediately. And then when you open up again, try to be more careful, please. The end. So I would like to point out canonically. Yeah. If you drink the lemonade, they leave you in Egypt. Yep. <laughs> And your parents are signed off on this. <laughs> they say, if, well, he, if he drinks the blue lemonade, I don't want him coming home. <laughs> no loose ends. If our son's an FBI agent, I want no son. If he Shut up, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> if he ain't working in cahoots with Web Woobly to stop the international art thief syndicate, I don't want my son, you who. No, sir. My son's going into the career of assistant Web Woobly like me and my grandfather before him. <laughs> oh, Web my. Woobly the first. Oh, my. Well, I mean, it's, I guess that that's the, uh, that's the ending for, like, this general path. The only thing would be, like, I, if we ran away from both of them. I think so. But I would imagine that that's probably, like, a whole, uh, whole nother thing. I mean, it may be as short as this path. We do not know. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm down to give it a gander. If you are, let's do it. All right, that's one o six. One o six. All right, this is giving the book to nobody. Which, again, canonically, <laughs> we've been brought to Egypt. This is <laughs> what? Canonically, this is, has to be correct as well, because if we yeah. go with the, the Egyptian god, we get trapped in a tomb, and all of the available options lead to us dying. If yeah. We do the other direction, you know, we fall asleep either way. Yeah. All right. Well, 106. You turn and dash away. You race across the desert sands. You don't trust either of these guys. Why should you? They're trying to take the mummy's diary away from you. The strange diary that magically changed from English to hieroglyphics. We did not mention that, yes. Uh, sand blows in your face as you leave the Great Pyramid far behind. 
Who cares? You'll eat sand if you have to. All you want to do is get out of here alive. You try and not let the feeling of cold fear rise into your throat. You swallow hard. Why? Choking it back down. How am I going to get home, you wonder? And how could that diary change like that? The diary maybe contains some kind of special message. Maybe you can figure it out. What, maybe you can figure out what the hieroglyphs mean. And then you'll know how to get home. You want to examine the diary again, so you glance over your shoulder to make sure you're not being followed. Are you? Make sure. Then turn to page seven. Ooh. Oh. Nobody seems to be around. Nothing but nothing but sand. Egyptian, Egypt. Sorry, Europe's hot sun uh, beats down on you, making you feel dizzy and faint. You'd like to sit down in the shade, but there isn't any. Water, you think? I must have water. Now you know why they say things like that in the old movies. You've never been so thirsty in your entire life. Luckily, you have a light jacket with you in San Francisco, and it's tied around your waist. You take it off and hold it over your head, using it as a tent for shade. You open the diary to the first page with writing. It's page 7. You study the hieroglyphs, and they look like this. It's... A, it kind of looks like a happy face, and then there's three stars in, above it to the upper left. Yeah, this is a 3T unit. After we've collected nine of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like, yeah, like a happy face. I mean, to me, it says, what do you think it means? It looks like a bunch of birds sitting around a campfire. Turn to page 58. If it looks like an ancient Egyptian smiley face, turn to page 12. I mean, I... I mean, gosh, it does look like both. It is birds sitting around a campfire. It's, it's such at, that they form the uh, shape of a smiley. Darn, they got us there. It's it's totally both. Uh, let's let's go with the smiley face. It's optimistic. Yeah, smile. This glass isn't half full. This glass is overflowing. Let's go. <laughs> this glass is happy as hell. Oh, uh, you know what? Looks and I like am an buying Egyptian that lottery smiley? ticket. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm buying that lottery ticket. I'm optimistic, baby. Double down. Buy a couple. Yeah. 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 Looks like an ancient Egyptian smiley face to me. You say out loud. Uh-oh, you're talking to yourself, and you're seeing smiley faces. You better find some water soon. Suddenly, you remember you had a pack of fruity bites mm, in your pocket. So you reach for them, and they're still there. They're only a little melted. You pop two in your mouth. Ah, they almost make you forget about your parched throat. Almost, but not for long. Get up and search for water on page 24. Do we have to manage resources? Ooh. Mm. If you don't... Inventory tracking? Inventory tracking? If you don't find water soon, you know you're a goner for sure. So you stagger forward, sucking on the fruity bites. Then you see it. Another smiley face. Maybe you are going mad. It's on that sand dune not far from you. A row of Egyptian statues. bird face pillars carved in stone. The ones you've seen in books in ancient Egypt. Two statues make the eyes... And seven more make the mouth, exactly like the drawing in the diary. You pull out the diary, turn to page seven, and check it again. The face in the diary has a nose. There's no nose with the statues. But you figure that could just be a picture of the sun to show how hot it is in the desert. That would make sense. What doesn't make sense is why the Egyptians put a smiley face design in the middle of the desert. And why the mummy's diary has a picture of it. Run over to the statues on page 133 to get some answers. Ooh, are we dealing with a sundial? <laughs> Somehow, sunhow, you manage to stumble over the row of bird face statues. When you get there, you realize what the nose on the drawing is for. There among the statues, halfway between the eyes and the mouth, is a hole in the sand and some steps that lead down into it. You hadn't noticed until now, but the sun is setting against some sand dunes behind you. Looks like the picture is just making the nose... Wait, it looks just like the picture making the nose and the smiley face. Oh. You, you notice see. it now because that precise because at the precise angle the sun rays reach all the way to the bottom of the hole in the sand and there you see something amazing. Gold, tons of it, coins, little statues, scepters, crowns all made of gold, the treasure of King Muthramalan. So that is why everybody wants the diary. It's a treasure map. But gold is not all you see down there. You also see teeth, sharp pointy teeth, two rows of them grinning up from the gigantic mouth of a crocodile. As carefully as you can, turn Ooh. to page 46. There is a big, ugly crocodile in the steps in front of you. Crocodiles mean crocodiles mean water. Mm. That means there must be some nearby. But right about now, crocodiles mostly mean danger. 
<laughs> it's like he's guarding the gold. You freeze. Don't move, you tell yourself. Whatever you do, don't run. No quick movements. But do you really want to stand here and be eaten alive, especially when there could be water down in that pit? Your mind races, trying to think quickly. Two ideas come to you. You could toss some of the fruity bites to the crocodile. Maybe then it would leave you alone. Or you could try moving very, very slowly past him on the stairs. If you don't find water, you might need those fruity bites. What will you do? Throw him some candy or try and move past? All Dang, right. this may be inventory management. We might get to keep these fruity bites if we move correctly. I mean, I'm happy to give him some because I'm so curious. I just, I need to know what happens if the crocodile tries to eat fruity bites. Let's share. Like, just, I just need to know what that looks like. You, I just wanted to say, thank you. You, thank just, you. you decide to throw the croc some candy. You are just about to reach in your pocket for some fruity bites when the crocodile suddenly opens his mouth and attacks you, chopping down hard. Oh. Ah! You scream as you feel his teeth tear through your jeans and begin to pierce your leg. Crawl out over to page 129. Oh. With all your strength, you wrestle the croc, trying to pry his mouth open. You throw yourself to the ground, whipping the croc off the stairs and over onto his back. Frantically, you plunge your hand into your pocket. You pull out a fruit through a few fruity bites and toss them into his mouth next to where your leg is. The croc opens his jaw wide and wider. Could it be? Is you letting you escape? You jump out of his jaws super fast. But as soon as you're out, the croc smacks his lips together. Crocs don't have lips. And wa opens wide. You can tell from the look on his face that he only wants one thing. More fruity bites. You toss mm. him another handful of fruity bites and hurry away. Uh-oh. Don't look now. With a slap slap of his stubby legs, the croc follows you like a puppy begging for more candy. His, he snaps his jaws together twice. A warning. And you know what it means. Give him fruity bites now or else. Well, as long as you can afford to keep buying fruity bites, you'll stay alive. But you're in Europe. Where you are you going to be buying any fruity bites around here? I guess you're up the Nile without a paddle. To the crocodile, you look like one big fruity bite. The end. It was too effective. Too effective. Uh, well, okay. We'll, we'll go. We'll run the other one to its natural conclusion at eighty-seven. Trying 87. to move past them. Thank you, Muchly. Water, you say to yourself. I desperately need water. It's all you can think about. If there's water in that pit, then you've got to get down there. So, moving as slowly as you can, you step past the croc. Big mistake. Because the crocodile was saying to himself, Lunch. I desperately need lunch. Too bad for you. No water, no treasure, no escape from the croc. <laughs> Look like, looks like Buthrabaman's treasure is fool's gold. And guess who the fool is at the end. So yeah. It's just like a no-go on either front there. That was basically just what? like... What? In, in order to get a different ending, we would have theoretically needed to... Uh, I guess think it looks like birds. But I, I, but we found the thing that it actually was. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm so confused. I know. I, I think some that... of these endings are quite neutral at the very least. Some of them are even slightly positive. Hey, at least for a fleeting moment of time, uh, a you know director in the FBI as well as your parents believed in you. They don't any longer, but they did. Previously. I know. So that was nice. Yeah. So I mean, hey, I don't know. Do we wrap it there, or do we think it looks like a bird? Like. I, I'm happy to see if it looks like a bird because I do think it's just going to lead us back to this path immediately. So. I think so too. Let's let's say it looks like a freaking birds. It looks like a birds. An ancient smiley face. That's a good one. You decide it's a bunch of birds sitting around a campfire. They look like they're having a good time too, but what does it mean, you wonder? There's nobody there to answer you. Sand swirls around you. Your throat is so hot and dry you can hardly swallow. You have to find some water. But the best you can do is keep walking, and so you do. You walk and you walk and you walk 20 minutes, 30, still no water. But then you see something else, something you recognize. The titular Sphinx, a huge stone monument in the desert near the pyramids. The Sphinx has the body of a lion with a human head on the handlebars of a treadmill. Eagerly, you run the last few hundred feet to the stone monument. He towers over you more than 60 feet tall. 
Well, you think, gazing up at the Sphinx. There's something eerie and mysterious about him. He looks as if he knows a secret and won't tell. Suddenly, you hear a voice. A huge, booming voice coming from the statue. Okay, you'll need to quickly tell me what page you're on. 58. 58, thank you. Uh, I've, I've been searching for it and had not managed to find it. Okay, cool. Huge, booming voice coming so from the giant voice? statue right at the bottom. Go back. The Sphinx commands you. You must not trespass on the grave of kings. Ooh, I'm Yoo-Hoo the Brave, FBI agents from... <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to 119. 119. You stare at the Sphinx, your eyes growing wide. Is this really happening? Is the Sphinx really talking to you, or have you finally lost your mind? Then you spot a crowd of people swarming around the base of the monument. Go back. The Sphinx's voice booms again, then instantly the crowd turns. They run from the Sphinx screaming in terror for their lives. Fear grips you. You don't know why the people around you are scared, but suddenly you're scared too. So you turn and flee. Sand flies in your face and your, as your feet pound across the desert. Call it! A voice suddenly shouts from a megaphone. Go to page 122. Uh, huh? You think? Did someone just yell, cut? You glance over your shoulder and notice another group of people you hadn't seen before. It's a movie crew. An American movie crew. It looks like they're making some kind of adventure picture in Europe. <laughs> the crowd of terrorized running people are all actors and extras. And the voice of the Sphinx is coming from the speaker on the side. Cool, you think? You wonder who's in the movie. Then you spot him. It's the star of the film. It's Illinois Smith. He's the character in all of those action movies about the lost treasures and ancient tombs. Hey, maybe Illinois, Illinois Smith, Smith can help you figure out what the mummy's diary means. What do you think? Do you ask for his help or do you try and puzzle it out for yourself? I don't know. The Lost American wasn't that helpful. I mean, hey, ask Illinois or just do it ourselves. Let's ask him. Let's ask him. All right, Illinois Smith. You decide to ask Illinois Smith for help. Why not? He's always figuring out ancient curses and translating foreign languages and things like that in his movies. <laughs> uh, excuse me? You say, walking up to Smith. Actually, his real name's not Smith. That's just the character's name. Uh, but you can't remember his real name. Mary, maybe it's like Harry Delta something? <laughs> yeah. He says, glancing at you from under his famous brown hat. You hand him the strange thin pages of the mummy's diary. Uh, sorry. I was just wondering if you could... But before you can finish your sentence, Smith grabs the diary out of your hands. Sure, kid. He says. Anytime. Then he pulls out a big, fat, felt-tip marker and scrawls an autograph across the page, completely blotting out the ancient writing underneath. Do you really think a movie star was going to decipher hieroglyphs for you? Really? Well, decipher this. Ha 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 The end. Rude. I yep. mean, like, you thought this Let's was... Let's go find Alabama Williams. They'll help me. Exactly. I'm going to figure it out ourselves. We are you who the brave, and I will figure it out by myself. Screw you, movie um, actor. 81. Which page? 81, thank you. Forget him, you decide. He's just a movie character. What do we need to know about hieroglyphs in real life? I know, right? I know, right? I know, right? Mm. Uh, besides, beyond the movie set, you see a catering truck. They'd have something to drink. A moment later, you're sitting in the shade of one of the pyramids with a cool, refreshing bottle of cola. You pull the diary out of your pocket again and study the pictures in the book. There's a page with the birds, and there's another with fish. You notice each of the pages has one, two, or three stars in the corner. One of the extras from the film sits down next to you, and he peers over your shoulder, noticing the ancient-looking book in your hand. <laughs> oh, my hey. God. He says, pointing to the page with birds on it. That restaurant's still in downtown Cairo. Pete's Chicken Grill, best place in town. Restaurant? Chicken Grill? What's he talking about? Then it dawns on you. The pictures of birds and fish, the stars in the corner, the diary is a restaurant guide. Who would have thought that Brutha Maman was really the world's first restaurant critic? Oh, well, don't feel bad. You solved the mystery of the mummy's diary, and now you can know Now you know where to get a good meal. The end. 
Wow. We have a good ending. That's probably the best ending, I guess. Yeah. But I also mean, we are still in Europe. <laughs> we are still in Europe. And also, we do know that the mummy is apparently going to come to life tonight. And we yeah, just exactly. completely that's been completely unsolved across the board here. Like well, it's okay. We're actually no, no no, we're ahead of him because we already know where he's going to be. So we just set up a watching operation. Yeah. We just stake out a couple of these joints and we'll see when Booth Ramaman turns up themselves. It's true. But we also know that canonically the three stars on Pete's chicken grill, they can't stay away. I know. We also know canonically that this book was planted by the FBI and is fake. So the <laughs> FBI planted a fake Egyptian sorry european ancient mm. european <laughs> restaurant review <laughs> guide for a kid to find oh my mm -hmm. god i mean to be clear they were saying that it was just important international art right so that's true to them it doesn't matter that it was just this. Like, you know, the Rosetta Stone could have easily just been a description of how one tills one's fields, right? And that doesn't mean it's not as important as it has been historically. It's true, it's true, it's true. Uh, you know what tills my field? We did it? This book. What tills your field, Rudolph? <laughs> this book was... It was a trip. It was wild. It was. It was basically like... I don't know. It felt, it felt like traversing through a pyramid, in a way. Mm -hmm. Like here you go here's a forking path and i mean you're gonna get a neutral option or a bad option okay mm -hmm. go back to the other tiny little like the the forks that led to endings were always like so close to each other which is interesting yes like the the pacing I don't the, know. the pacing of the 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 setup for a puzzle as well and then the immediate payoff like it was always like here's the puzzle on one page or possibly distributed across two and then your next choice is pertinent and then after that it was no longer really relevant to you which um that was good for making it feel circuitous such as you know being trapped in a pyramid uh, yeah but it I, I would like to see them have uh, puzzles that last more than a page. It's true. Uh, you know, uh, the remembrance of the moving coffins uh, yeah. in particular, the crawling was coffins, nice. was a very, very good example of that. It's true. I, yeah, I like that. I like that one a lot for sure. From like a from like I, a game book perspective, I like that one a lot. This one was mm -hmm. this one was fun and like uh, it was easier to have a giggle uh, at its expense. Have a like mm -hmm. this one had a little like a lot more elements uh, <laughs> that I don't know that that were fun to have a giggle at. Uh, so I enjoy I enjoyed this one in a completely I don't know like each book I am enjoying in a way that feels different than the way I enjoy mm -hmm. the other books, which is kind of nice. Um, but hey, I I will I will share one sadness of mine is that uh, we no longer saw the Mad Mummy because we went to Egypt rather than checking them out. I believe the other path would have had much more interactions with them. And that was... That is true. That's I, I do love a good mad mummy. I mean, yeah. characters like that. Well, for return to page in 20... Uh, whatever. <laughs> who knows? Perchance we will get a chance to revisit. Who who freaking knows? If I mean, is. if you're looking, by the way, huh? that might happen in a couple of years, but you could find the, the way to access that content yourself on turn to page .com or over on twitter you can even find turn to page there turn to page pod or is it turn to page cast it should be turn to page cast on twitter as well turn to page cast on twitter as well yep uh also if you have been enjoying the series as well please do remember to leave a review if you'd be so kind very very helpful in terms of getting the podcast out there into other hands as well it's true and I will say the number one way for podcasts of this size to grow is if you have anybody that you think might, you know, find it interesting or funny or, you know, who liked, you know, likes goosebumps, that is a, uh, you know, why not send it on over? That'd be a, a wonderful way to, uh, to help out the podcast. It's how, like I said, best way that these, these sized podcasts grow for sure is word of mouth and sharing through friends. But uh alas friends 
This has been all of our diary that we're going to share with you, you nosy little so-and-so. This has been our uh, our di diary of a mad mummy. But it has been turned to page. We'll be back at it again uh, next week with Deep... What is it called? Deep in the Jungle of Doom. Mm. Another, th like, more themed one. So I'm very excited for that, but... Alas, that's we that. We across Illinois Smith there again. I yep. think it would work. We might. We might. Goosebumps does love a recurring character. But, hey, that's that. That's going to do it. Thank you, buddy, for listening, and bye-bye. Happy Halloween. Goodbye.